Berlin, Germany's capital, is a melting pot of cultures and activities. The city can be hard to navigate if you don't know your way around. Since I've called Berlin home for over 13 years, let me be your guide and show you how to have a fun time here. Hi everyone and welcome to my perfect weekend in Berlin. Virtually every corner of the city holds volumes of history. I'm driving now over the former wall. I make my way to Checkpoint Charlie, a crossing point between East and West Berlin during the Cold War. It's infamous for the standoff between Soviet and American tanks in October of 1961. Now, Checkpoint Charlie is somewhat of a circus. There are all sorts of commercial shops here. So it is hard to imagine what tensions were really like back then. But thanks to the artist and the architect, Yadagard Azizi, visitors can get an idea of what life was like back in a divided Berlin. I embark on a journey back in time to when the wall once stood. This exhibition has drawn in one and a half million tourists since it opened in 2012. The Berlin Wall fell 30 years ago and very few traces of it exist today. I'm lucky to have a special guide who gives me some background. So here I am with the longtime press spokesperson of the artist and architect Yadagard Azizi, Karsten Grebe. You've worked a long time with him. You know a lot behind his thinking. So what was the overall goal here of this project? Well, he lived both sides of uh, the world, like the communist and the capitalist, mm -hmm. even in Berlin. And when the wall had come down in 1989, he thought it would be a good idea to show how normal people live their normal lives. You know, many tragedies are well known and you know many things about death, but he wanted to show the normal life. It's important to point out that if we travel back in time to what year is this supposed to be? Well, it's somewhere in the 80s. Somewhere in the 80s. We're on the west side. We're we're exactly. not in the east, so yes, we're exactly. standing in the west looking over to the east, right? Yeah. And any particular message that he wants visitors to take away? Well, we now live in a free city, in a free world in Germany and in Berlin, and it hasn't always been like that, especially in the 20th century. And when you look at this panorama, you get an imagination uh, how, how it was, how it could be. And um, the idea behind this is like, well, you have to do something to fight for freedom, for democracy, you have to stand up for it. This is definitely my culture tip for a perfect weekend in Berlin. Next, I drive to the longest remaining section of the Berlin Wall. It's located in former East Berlin. Today, this area is a top tourist destination. Here we are at the East Side Gallery. Now, it's called this because this is the eastern part of the wall. Of course, 30 years ago, none of this existed as brightly and beautiful it is now. But in 1990, over 100 artists were invited here to display their works. And the most famous painting is coming up. The Socialist's Fraternal Kiss. And it inspires me to embrace my sound man, Kolya. Berlin is a city that never sleeps. This is where I usually go for live music, the A-Train Jazz Club. Hey, David. Hey, How are you on? doing? Good, Good to see you. you. Yes. All right, so what are you going to play for us tonight? Tonight is a tribute for Stevie Wonder. Oh, my goodness. An Wonderful. Singer. Well, I just yeah. want to give you some background. Mm -hmm. David uh, has played with uh, Prince and Shaka Khan, so extensively with Prince, right? I mean, that's what sort Recording, of your yeah. calling card was, was uh, for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of audiences, uh, how is the Berlin audience compared to audiences in the U.S. or other parts of Europe that you've played in? I mean, how do they respond to you? Um, they love American music. Um, so it's very similar, like I said before, because uh, Berlin, at general, in general, Germany as a country is very international. So um, they love, love the music. Well, we don't want to keep David any longer because he's got an audience to please with. Yes. Thanks. Thanks <laughs> well, so thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah, All right. great. All right, take care. Tonight, David Haynes has put together a great ensemble of professional musicians who know how to get the crowd moving, including me. So, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have a very special guest. And um, she is here filming a TV show. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call up Megan and my two lovely ladies to come back on stage with me. 
and they're gonna join me for the end of this song. Right. So let's have let's give a hand. Oh, we're gonna test, we're gonna test Megan's singing skills. <laughs> I'm not afraid, but I don't have the greatest singing voice. She should be afraid. <laughs> okay. So Megan, let's start with this. Let's do a bop. Ba 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 Okay, let's try another one. Uh okay, here we go. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry I might feel like Diana Ross, but my singing skills leave much to be desired. Still, I had a good time at the A train. Day two of my perfect weekend begins with a victory tour of sorts. Most commercial stores are closed on Sundays in Germany, but I have a good solution for shoppers like me. Berlin's oldest flea market, but be aware the vendors here drive a hard bargain. Billig, billig. That means sheep. Go over here. I find some things I like, but Khaled, the seller, doesn't seem to like my offers. His stuff isn't so cheap after all. Five. That's 10 euro. Five. I give you five. Nine, no 10 euro. That's two. I give you two. Nine. Nine. That's a so billig. Thank you. Finally, I get my okay. vase for five euros. There's something for everyone here. Oh, I have to buy this. This is something for the cats. They will eat it. No, they love this. I want to buy it. How much is it? 10 euros. 7 euros. I give in for 10 euros. Dankeschön. Wir sehen uns wieder. And this is my shopping tip for a perfect weekend in Berlin. A couple of souvenirs from one of the flea markets. Another special thing about Berlin are its lakes located within city limits. In just 20 minutes, I'm on an island paradise. So another fun pastime for Berliners on the weekend is heading out to one of the many lakes. And we are here on the Wannsee, heading to the so-called Peacock Island. Why is it called Peacock Island? Because, well, you're about to find out. <laughs> because peacocks live here. I find out the backstory from the island's former garden director, Michel Zyla. The island was called Rabbit Island because the great elector raised rabbits here for the cooks. When the king, who was known for his love affairs, took it over, it couldn't be called Rabbit Island, so the peacocks were brought here, and one year later, in 1794, it was called Peacock Island. Zyla has lived here for 40 years. The castle, he tells me, was built by King Frederick William II for his mistress. Frederick William II sat yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. And his, and his lover sat here as well? Yes, yes. Well, I don't know if she sat here, but when His Majesty came, pillows were laid out here. Mr. Zeiler also shows me the candelabra fountain from 1825 made entirely of iron. During our walk, we're caught in a downpour, just as I ask him about some of the challenges of living here. My predecessors used to have to travel to and from Berlin by horse and carriage. But today, with a car, it's easy to get into town, when the ferry isn't broken down, and that can happen. But normally, it runs around the clock. That means I can come home at 1 in the morning. The big difference nowadays is that the ferry drivers always know when I'm out and when I'm home. In former times, when the young unmarried girls who wanted to be employed at the castle, it was tricky. If the ferry driver was asked if they came home last night and he said no up to four times, that meant that then they weren't fit to work for the king. But of course, that doesn't apply to me. Let's go back under the tree. I'm, I'm going back under this tree with the mice. If you're a lover of nature, then you accept everything with it, including the rain. And I am one of those lovers of nature, so even though I'm stuck under a tree until the rain passes, I will definitely say that the Peacock Island, or Fauninsel, is my special tip for a perfect weekend in Berlin.
luckily the sun has come back out just in time for my final destination, the iconic Berlin TV Tower. It stands 368 meters tall and has a revolving restaurant offering great views of the city. Dietmar Jezerich knows the TV Tower well and explains some of the features here, including a culinary superlative, Berlin Currywurst, but this time served with champagne. Currywurst is different from a hot dog, really, though. It's, it's very special. It's a German, German sausage with curry ketchup. After the war, there was no mustard. Then one woman who had a small sausage stand here in Berlin began to experiment to find out what goes best with a spicy sausage. And that's how she came up with this combination. And then, with time, the side dishes that now go with currywurst were created. Right. Okay, now, drinking champagne is something very special that goes with currywurst. I'm not so sure many French people would say that, that this is actually allowed. I think in France you could go to jail for this, but in Germany it's definitely allowed. You can either drink beer. Beer goes great with currywurst, but I must say I've never had champagne with currywurst. Why this combination? Who came up with that? It's a very special taste. The slight spiciness of the curry together with the fruitiness of the champagne. You just simply have to experience that. All right, well, you know, you heard it from Dietmar. He said, I have to try this. You have to try this. So, without further ado, we raise our glasses and we say, to currywurst and a view in Berlin. Belly. And he's right, you have to taste it to believe it. Wow, that was really fun. And that wraps up my perfect weekend in Berlin. Join me again as I explore more exciting European destinations. And until then, it's happy travels. Okay, Mads, let's go.